Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Use a breaker bar, 19 millimeter deep socket, to loosen the lug nuts of the vehicle on the ground. So the wheel's not turning on you. Get them nice and loose. Raise and support the vehicle. Lug nuts loose, I'm just gonna use the socket, take them off the rest of the way, and remove the tire and wheel. Take the tire and wheel off, and we'll put this aside. I'm just gonna turn the wheels so the brake caliper is facing out, and I can get to it easier. Use a flat bladed screwdriver, just gonna slide it in here. Just pry the caliper outwards. It's gonna compress the piston. And do it to both, because this is a double piston caliper. So you just wanna loosen it just enough. It'll make it easier to slide this off of the pads. You need to remove the top, the top and bottom caliper slide pin bolts. At 14 millimeter, I'm start with the top one. Get that loose. Same for the bottom one, get that loose, take them both out, slide the caliper off, take our bungee cord, and let's see, that should work, up and around the coil spring, came undone. I'll hang right there. Pull our pads out. You can wedge a flat bladed screwdriver in there, help you pry it out. So we're, not, we're not reusing these, so. There's an upper and lower caliper bracket bolt. They're 17 millimeter. I'm gonna start with the lower one. It's on there pretty tight. I'm gonna readjust the wrench here. I'm gonna use a Deblo mount, break it free. Do the same to the top one. I'm going to switch to a 17 millimeter socket and ratchet to make this go quicker. Put the bracket aside. I'm going to spray some rust penetrant in here. And hit these threaded openings here and down the studs. Thread a lug nut on here. I'm going to tap the rotor with a dead blow to break it free. All right, doesn't want to move. I'm going to use these pusher holes here. All right, it's an 8 by 1.0 thread pitch. Just find some appropriately sized bolts to thread in there. They're metric. Just use the socket that fits them and just evenly tighten them. This is just going to push the rotor right off the hub. Easy. Here's our original brake rotor from our vehicle. These are the original pads. They're brand new pads from moneyauto.com. And you can see on these, take our brake pad measurement tool. The new ones have 10 millimeter. And the worn ones, five millimeter, they're roughly half worn. Not too bad, but we're gonna replace them anyways. These are an exact match. I've got inside and outside here. If we take these, they're an exact match with the wear indicators on them. Those will fit great and work great. If we look at our rotors, the original rotor has a black coating on the hub to prevent rust. It does wear off, brakes do get hot, so the paint does eventually wear down and it will begin to rust. However, we've got these E-coated rotors from oneauto.com, so they do paint the hub, they paint the edge to prevent rust. Of course, this will always rust because it's bare metal where your brake pads ride, but that is an exact match for the factory rotor. It'll fit great and work great for you. And we also have available these drilled and slotted rotors. 
These have a zinc coating so they don't rust. And you can kind of see the difference. The zinc coating right now is over the entire surface. It will wear off where the brake pads ride, so these will flash rust, but you can kind of see the difference in a raw metal and a zinc coated here. So this also is to prevent rust and these will look cooler on our vehicle. But everything will fit exactly the same as factory and work great. Just gonna check the slide pins. These move in and out real nicely. I'm not gonna mess with them. They're working perfectly. If they were sticking, you could pull them out of the rubber boots and clean and lubricate them. But since these are working great, I'm gonna leave them alone. Caliper hardware is stainless. And if you were used, we're just going to clean it with some brake parts cleaner and a wire brush. And just do the same for both sides of the caliper bracket. We're going to use our drilled and slotted rotors. These can go on in either direction. The veins inside are straight. They are not left and right. But you can pick which direction you want these to go. We're going to put them towards the front. I'm going to put it on backwards first. Just make sure the braking surface is clean. I'm going to use some part, brake parts cleaner. Just wipe down anything with a rag. Any packaging oil that might be on these. Take them off for a second. I'm just going to clean this hub up. It's not too rusty. Spray it with a little bit of brake parts cleaner. Wipe it down. I'm going to take some copper anti-seize. Just put it on the hub surface here where the rotor will touch and could potentially rust on. So just for future service, make sure the, ru the rotor can come off easily. Install the rotor. Proper way, take a lug nut, just thread that down so it can't fall off. Use some brake parts cleaner. Make sure the surface stays nice and clean, free of grease and dirt. You can also buy new caliper bracket bolts from 1A Auto. This one here is really rusty and gross. The top one wasn't too bad, but we've got two brand new ones and we're going to install those. I'm going to put a little bit of copper never sees on these bolts to prevent corrosion. Do the top one first. The rotor is kind of out of place. I'm going to have to push it in. I'll just slide the bracket over first and get that lined up. I'm going to reach over. Move the bracket around, find where it bolts in. Do the same for the bottom one. I have the top bolt started. Get those threaded down. Tighten these down. My socket and ratchet. There's a lock washer. It will start to compress. Go down evenly. Put the box wrench on here, and they're already pretty tight. Bring them down, nice and tight, and a quarter turn more like that. These do have a lock washer, so once that lock washer is compressed, they won't back out. I'm going to make sure that these pads stay nice and clean. You don't get any grease or oil or dirt on them. You just give them a quick spray with brake parts cleaner. You don't need to soak the pad. Put a little bit of caliper grease on the ears. This will help them slide on the hardware. Brake pads are curved, so that outer curve is going to match the outer curve on the brake rotor. You don't want to try to install them backwards. The wear indicators go towards the bottom. Install the rear pad, the inside pad. Push it in place. I'm going to 
take our old pad, put it inside the caliper. We'll take our C-clamp, we'll get the set up, and we're going to gently compress the pistons back into the caliper. Press these in. Difficult to get this in the middle. Pressed in, should slide right over our pads. Slide pin bolts do have flat sides to them. They have curved and flat. The flat's gonna sit like that. Same for both upper and lower. We install the slide pin bolts. Just tighten these down. Get them tight. A little bit more. Don't want to break them. They're just small bolts. So that moves nice in and out on the slides. If you use the lug nut to keep this rotor from falling off, just make sure you take it off before you try to put the wheel and tire on. Put the wheel and tire on. Start lug nuts by hand. Just gonna use the socket. Thread these all down, and then I'll put the vehicle on the ground and torque them. I'm gonna torque the lug nuts to 89 foot pounds in a cross pattern. Now we need to Gently pump the brakes to move the pistons out to meet the pads. You're not going to press it all the way to the floor. Press it about a quarter of the way. Build it up. It'll start to get harder. That's perfect. Now the brake job is done. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.